So um, today we will look at precision agriculture. And again, the motivation for this lecture is the fact that a lot is happening at Clums. Um, a lot is happening, I think, within the center on the field of in the field of agriculture. And we haven't really discussed it in, in that breadth. And also because I told you about the multiple uh, waves that came from agricultural revolution to, you know, to, to conservation agriculture, and then finally to genetic um, modification or genetically modified food. The fourth wave actually is of what you call digital agriculture or precision agriculture. And in the very first lecture, I had shared a video of a robot with you, and, and I hope that most of you had uh, looked at it. I'm quoting it again today for, for you to see. And, and I think also in the lecture about agriculture, I mentioned that ideally a pest should, you know, a pesticide should know exactly where a pest is. And it should also know exactly how much dose should the pesticide be put in or a herbicide or a weedicide be put in in a particular place to make sure that excess chemical is not used. To also make sure that, you know, we're not using, you know, again, we're not using our intuition that because there is pest somewhere, we just use a lot of chemicals. So we conserve resources, whether that's environment friendly or non-environment friendly resource, we're just conserving it. And the same could be same for, said for water as well. Maybe there's a particular patch in the field that requires wa water or watering, but the, the rest of the field doesn't. So how do you kind of use this uh, method where you give exactly what is required to the field, you know, as nutrients, as, as water, or any other resource that is required for food production. How do you, how can you use certain tools and gadgets to find out exactly what is needed and exactly in how much quantities? And how can you use all of these gadgets to then, you know, talk to you and tell you, yes, I'm, I'm feeling happy now, you, you, can, you can stop it. And how can you, instead of going yourself, remember there's, there's another thing that I also said that now, labor is, get, is becoming scarce. It's not just resources, it's not just capital, it's not just land. People in the field of agriculture are also becoming scarce because you know everyone's leaving um, or fleeing these places. It's not profitable, so that, that makes sense. But labor is becoming, you know, it's diluting with time. So how do you, how can a farmer use all of these gadgets to just ask something or a particular uh, channel or stream to just open, switch on and switch off, or a tube to just switch on and switch off whenever water is needed in the field. So that kind of intervention is happening and that kind of intervention is happening under the field of precision agriculture. But, but then again, I mean, we've had this discussion about producing more food for, uh, for you know, 9 billion people by 2050. And, and that's, we say that it, it has to be 70% more food. And how can we achieve that food? Should we achieve that food by conservation agriculture? Should we achieve that food by reducing the waste? Because, you know, the food that's being produced is, is wasted. Should we make our practices environment friendly? How can we stop from the land uh, from degrading? And, and how can we control what cannot be controlled? How can we control climate change? We cannot. So we, when we adapt with it and we know that climate change for sure is going to happen and the productivity might increase or decrease in a certain areas, what would that mean for the farmer? And how if, if you know, the, the yield is going to decrease, how can we then promise our future generations that excess food on the plate would be available? So all of these things you know, require for us to, um, to, to go beyond our, our traditional thinking of it's going to rain, let me not water it, but, but using multiple tools to, to make sure that, uh, that something can be done. Um, I think I can quickly touch upon this. Um, so I gave you readings. I just want to see who has read it. Um, so there were a couple of readings. I think if anyone wants to highlight the one where we spoke about how animal farms can become a source for another pandemic. If anyone wants to talk about it, you're welcome. Otherwise, I'll just discuss it myself. Yes, Natasha. Um, so the article was uh, basically stating that we generally tend to assume that pandemic and viruses are going to be restricted to the human population, whereas that's actually not the case because just like you can't separate a South Korean immunity with like a Chinese immunity, you certainly can't distinguish between different species when it comes to viruses as well, right? So the fact that we've been so um, irresponsible with how we deal with animals in the face of this pandemic, given the fact that we uh, sort of put entire like 
like uh, huge populations of animals like in within restricted pop, uh, within like a restricted environment we put them in closed spaces that is basically breeding grounds for the virus and that is how you allow the virus to spread even more within animals and it basically just highlighted the fact that we tend to ignore the impact that these viruses can have on animals and just assume that the impact is going to be on humans Perfect. So, you know, we, I generally I've used this term, I, I usually think like that for pollution, that pollution knows no boundaries, it has no boundaries, it will just, but I think this time, the, a new angle for me was to think that, you know, pathogens also don't respect boundaries, pathogens also don't respect boundaries of countries or of species. So they can actually <laughs> operate from, from, you know, a bat to a food chain to then a pig to, to then a human. So thinking that it, it's just restricted to, a, because it, in a particular animal is restricted to a wild setting, it wouldn't somehow come to you, is, is now obsolete because, you know, these things, COVID in particular has taught us exactly how these things are the, the next um, biggest problem that we could face in future. And I think some of the terms that I, that I really liked in the article, um, maybe I wouldn't have been able to put it that way, was you know, how we are creating with the kind of practices we have genetically uniform species, um, immunocompromised, you know, the immunity is compromised, whether it's, it's plants or animals, as well as heavily drugged. Um, so the, the previous videos that I asked you to watch told you how antibiotics in the meat could be a bigger pro problem than the meat and the GHG. So I think it's, it's so much more complicated than, than, than how we discuss it, depending on what, which perspective we take. But, but the fact remains that we are now more educated. We are educated about the fact that there is definitely an interlink between pandemics and um, this, this animal farming. So we need to be careful in our practices. And the fact um, that we, we're also aware of, of the fact that there is a food system and, and that system's approach needs to be taken into account to make sure, you know, what, what we studied in the previous slides, that you can't just look at an animal farm um, or a, a farming facility to think how could a virus uh, transfer or how could a particular bacteria transfer, but also think of you know all the other systems of energy, health, um, everything else that could could be incorporated to it, and then um, see the impact. Cool. So I think I can let this one go where we saw um, in the readings again just just to, for you to have a quick um, relook at some of the things that that we've looked at how you know a neutral pH. Of, pH in a particular range is good for nutrients like N, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, so the NPK, the macronutrients, and then, you know, the alkaline and acidic, you go, certain deficiencies can occur based on the breadth of the, of the bar. So I'll let this one go. Uh, Eamon, do you have a question? Uh, Ma'am, I just wanted to share a point uh, that I found really interesting. Uh, my cousin is uh, a biotech student and she was telling me about her um, final project, you know, and it was basically about um, related to, you know, animal farming. So I thought I should share it. It was basically about how, you know, um, arsenic is, you know, given to the broiler, broiler chicken in, in the regular feed, right? So um, she was she was telling me about how even this minor concentration is not, you know, accumulated by the organs of the broiler boiled chicken and it's eventually excreted out so like in this excreta this you know the arsenic gets converted into inorganic or cancerous form so she was basically doing research on how this can contaminate food crops and soil and because you know application of poultry excreta over soil has been used for as a soil conditioner for many years so i thought that was really intriguing yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate if they are actually using arsenic in the feed. Science has evolved so much. Everyone knows how pathogenic arsenic um, or carcinogenic these heavy metals are. So it's unfortunate that, that it's still being used. And yeah, the fact remains, and which, which we read in the article as well, that the excreta, we, we, if we think that the organic farm is, farming is helping us, but you know, we're not allowing for that um, cow dung or manure to sit and for bacteria to degrade it, it properly before we apply it to to our field, then some of these bacteria can transfer to not only our water, but our food chain as well. So, so the vegetable needs to be washed. So, you know, it's, it's not as simple as, as, um, as we generally just, just put it. Um, and there can be multiple ways of looking at it. This particular slide is from a conference, which I was a part of, and I kind of take the ownership for that, for that because there were hundreds of students and industrialists and entrepreneurs and startups in this uh, particular summit that's called Thought for Food, where we put, um, you know, everything um, relating to 
uh, creating that 70% uh, more food. So whether it's innovation, whether it's data, whether it's you know hacking biology, such as creating meat from that single cell, as we saw in one of the videos, to making it it healthy, nutritional, adaptable to climate change, and and you know making businesses sustainable. It, it, it can all, you know, and it should all be put in one place for the problem to be actually resolved. And, and you can look at the details um, later. So we, uh, coming back to precision agriculture, we've kind of, you know, drip irrigation is, is in a way um, precision agriculture as well, right? Because you are taking the water exactly where it's needed. You are reducing evapor evaporation um, and, you know, you, you just, increase the efficiency and water use on soil. So that's like one kind of, of, of efficiency or precision agriculture. But the kind of precision agriculture or the particular uh, field which I'll be referring to today is you know, more machine oriented and, um, and more gadgets oriented. So whether it's automated steering system, which, which I'll show you in a while, or sensors, remote sensing, these satellites that, that, that are collecting a lot of data for you, to, um, to, of course, GPS and, and geomapping and integrating ele electronics or variable rate technology. I'll try to touch upon them because I want Dr. Walker to speak more about this. I'll just touch upon it and then let him take, take the floor. So remember this particular video that I gave you in the first lecture is it's basically a mixture of everything that we're talking about. It's using renewable energy. It's auto steered. It can go and kill the herbicide gives exactly small um, amount of, of the chemical to where it's needed, uses a camera to de detect it. So literally like using multiple things um, to, to then variably use a certain chemical in a certain place. And, and so it's not uniform. Um, and, and I think because you, you might have already looked at the video, I wouldn't uh, go into the details, but this particular technology can both be map-based or sensor-based. And you know, here you can see that it's just a camera and Hassan has a point to it. Ed. Right, so I, I remember watching this video and I read the comment section and something, uh, uh, a lot of people brought up the point that you know, if the machine can go to individual weeds and spray it, why not just pluck it instead? Because the fertilizer, the the not the fertilizer, the weedicide it's using is is still bad. It does absorb into the soil, and it does go into like the water table below. So wouldn't it be better if it just plucked it instead? If it is targeting individual weeds. Yeah, if you ask me, absolutely. Because I've always seen manual um, handling of, of labor. But I think I I can pass this question on to Dr. Obakar if he's listening to us right now. But if you ask me, yes, absolutely. No chemicals is always a better option, but I can let Dr. Obakar take that question. I think uh, I just wanted to uh, say hello to everyone and uh, I'm happy that you are taking on this subject, which is very uh, close to my heart. So your question is, there are actually solutions available. Uh, there are these uh, weed zappers, uh, laser-based and uh, to physically pluck the uh, uh, the weeds out, or uh, uh, so instead of chemical application, uh, they either burn it out, yeah, usko physically manipulate karke jo hai, wo plug kar lete hain. Uh, it's just that these technologies are very, very expensive. Uh, maybe spraying a liquid on on top of a plant is uh, very um, is very feasible in in today's technology. Uh, using a manipulator hand to actually plug something out, that's far more sophisticated, far more expensive as well. But there are solutions out there uh, where they do these kind of things. Great, thank you, sir. Thank or, you. And then past that, I think um, another thing and another way, like I said, Ham uh, Hamesha said, like we've kind of looked at how we can use land-based data and data that's coming from the um, satellites to look at the complexity of issues relating to environment. Now in this particular um, slide, um, and I think this, this can relate more to you know, chemists and data analysts, is the fact that you are choosing a certain ground in wherever you're living to, to see, to, to check the soil samples. You know, as we um, heard Bhatti Saab that 
generally data on soil quality is not available. A farmer never knows exactly what the soil contains and how a certain cropping pattern has decreased the availability of a certain nutrient and what should be applied and how much quantity. But just to kind of for them to know how healthy their soil is, uh, basically what this particular research did, and I looked for one of the simplest papers is to kind of divide the land into a grid, take soil samples from there, take it to the lab, analyze certain aspects, could be as simple as looking at just the macro and micronutrients, and compared it um, or created these maps to see what could be the impact of current practices on the future of agriculture. So let's say they just developed the soil fertility map based on the nutrients that are available in the soil. And the, the, the graph that they kind of, or the legend that, uh, that uh, tells you that whether it's acidic, whether it has higher organic content, whether nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, which are one of the macronutrients are available or not. But imagine if such a uh, data uh, was available to, to a farmer, or, you know, to a farmer sitting in Hunza or to a farmer sitting in Balochistan or, or Sindh uh, on exactly where or which particular area is the soil too acidic for them to, you know, be careful. Because then what can happen is you can use a certain alkaline um, chemical or um, fertilizer to in that particular patch to make sure that the soil either recovers or let it um, recover with organic manure and organic matter. But you know exactly what the disease is and you know exactly where that problem is to kind of solve it. Because then solving it is, isn't, isn't a problem. And I think in many environmental issues, the problem with, I think the approach that Pakistan generally takes is the fact that they just take you somewhere and say, see, this is it. Now tell us what the solution is. And, and I always find it so hard because I've never ever given people any solution. I always say then, yeah, I think we need to take samples and find out exactly what the problem is. And they say, no, we know what the problem is. Productivity or yield is decreasing. But, but and then we have to so know we still want to know whether it's the water quality, it's the soil quality, it's something else, it's the air quality. And you know, the, the, without those, you, you cannot identify that, that, that one problem. So I think with this, um, using these ArcGIS or tools uh, of, of you know, geomapping, um, you can tell the farmer or a, a researcher can tell the farmer exactly what's wrong with the soil and exactly what should be done. Now this AgroSmart is a company of, of a very good acquaintance of mine and that's why I have used their slide um, as, as solidarity, they've, they've grown. Um, they, they are basically based in Brazil and are uh, providing an app to, to farmers where the farmer is able to make, make better decisions. So with using these, again, these satellite data as well as the on-farm data, integrating all of it together in a cloud and then bringing information to the farmer saying, it's going to rain tomorrow, don't water your crops today, um, you know, and, th and things like those. And while I was looking at it, I just looked for a similar thing in Pakistan and I found this website although there's little information in it but the fact that we've started it is I think already uh, great. So digital agriculture I actually some of the slides I wanted to improve uh, like include the computer scientists from the class more so I'm looking towards you guys if you have anything to add um, then, then please raise your hands and please put your points uh, forth. So what's digital agriculture it's exactly using all of these tools um, you know, as, as we saw in the AgroSmart, it's, it's looking at the internet of things, whether it's a cow or a crop. You, you, you care for each crop and you care for, you know, all of this because you care for the farmer. So all of that information then goes to the farmer, logs there, and then um, a decision has to be made. But it's not just about one farmer anymore, right? It's, it's about having information of multiple farmers or, or as we say, of my, over multiple um, geo, geographical locations where conditions could be similar. Um, so over the basin, for example, over a particular watershed, for example, you know exactly what is happening and, and how things are changing. And then scientists or data scientists can use that to predict and forecast uh, what could happen uh, based on whatever conditions are upstream. So if there's a release of pollution, what should be done downstream, you know, down, down to that level. But, but how does this data input, like most of these service providers, whether that, that's AgroSmart or any other service provider in Pakistan, they're all relying on farmers to give them data. So it's not just satellite data. Sometimes the farmer tells them, today I've watered my crop, and then he says, or oh, today I watered my crops again. And, and that way, you know, we, um, or, or whoever's collecting that data knows that perhaps it's too sunny, it's too hot, it's too humid, and that's why the farmer watered their crops 
thrice this week or once this week or once this month. So I think that frequency then helps whoever's looking at a decision on how much water should be allocated, what is the demand for water for a particular crop or farm. Um, and I think with data, and you know, I'm not, I don't work with big data, but I think the biggest problem with countries like Pakistan or India or Bangladesh is that our data is not uniform. You know, uniform, it's, it's quite dirty. So you, you would find my name as F-O-Z, F-O-U-Z, F-O-Z or F-A-Z. So because it's so, you know, someone calls me something and someone else calls me something else. So I think that there's no uniformity in, in the data that we get. So within a particular village, every organization gathering multiple data is never really, you know, first of all, it stays on paper. It never really comes on a digital platform, but if it ever finds its way to an Excel sheet, it's so, you, like you have to spend a lot of time to, to clean it. And I'm not sure if, if, if um, where, that's where the training should start, where a farmer knows exactly how to create a log and then exactly how and where to share it with other farmers to make sure that multiple uh, you know, decisions are made wisely and correctly and then you know we um, because i wanted to look for more exciting things in the future of agriculture how is how's everything changing so people are not this is not just restricted to use of fertilizers or um, or pesticides or using drones fancy drones to kind of monitor your crops it's, it's more than that it's analyzing your crop you know using again use looking at your crop as a mini factory but this time with the positive intention of making soil that the crop is healthy, the produce is healthy, and the soil is healthy as well. So this time the intention is, is clear and it's positive. So you know exactly, you know, so from sports spraying to need of irrigation to monitoring the health, especially in the case of livestock, I think, where multiple animals are put in one farm. Um, the, if, if one has a disease, then the ability of that disease to transfer to others is increases. And these um, technologies paired with other technologies can be used to monitor um, any uh, flaw or, or, or any problem in the, in the system. And the sensors can be different. You can just use a simple camera uh, or uh, you can use, uh, we have looked at IR cameras before in one of the uh, slides. It can be thermal or it can be multispectral, where, where you're using multiple sensors, not just thermal, but also thermal and visual. Um, and then, you know, things like LIDAR, which I think, again, I'll let Dr. Obaka speak about in greater details. So using all of these reflection, all of that electromagnetic radiation you should make use of um, here. But it's, it's not easy. It's, it's easy to say it, uh, or, or of course, it's not easy to develop it in the lab. But let's say even if you have developed it in the, in the lab, scalability still is a challenge. Taking it to a place where there are connectivity issues, taking it to a place where people are so poor that they don't have smartphones is, is, is still a challenge. So where do you start? Do you start with, again, going back, educating them, giving them a smartphone? Should they buy the smartphone themselves? Should we provide them the smartphones? And then how to use it? And then connectivity and then the technology, like how is this going to work? I don't think it's as easy as simple as just developing a technology and deploying it somewhere. It could be for, for some places, but definitely not, not for each place. And to kind of focus quickly on, on, on a few things, Gamaya is, is one supplier they have. They've created this small camera that's put on, on a drone that tells you multi, multiple spectrums over a crop, over a certain period of time. You know, it, it predicts the yield. It uh, um, tells you about the soil erosion or, or the gaps in the soil, the temperature, weed detection, et cetera. So, you know, these technologies are there or um, the satellite images, again, um, using satellite to find out how a crop is progressing. So this one is, is just from one paper that, that shows it from 2015 to July 2016. Uh, and, you know, you, you, you see that the crop is progressing, but also there are uh, certain levels of, of warning. So how do you, over a certain uh, period of time, you know, if the crops harvested and then on the land, you, you know, the land's barren and then you see, you know, a warning that's understandable because you can say that the land is naked because the crop is being harvested. But otherwise, if it refers to a particular, um, uh, in, in an active season, if the crops are dying and you, you see that you're uh, losing that green, then I think it, it's, it's an alarm. It's a warning system. It's an early warning system for, for farmers. So maybe if it happens in a particular center, you can 
send a notification to every other farmer saying something's wrong in, in this particular crop. There's a pest infestation and the crops are damaged or there's water scarcity and it's damaging. So make sure you're um, able to save your crops. So again, like better decision making, better crop production, uh, more food on the plate for, for the poor. And um, thermal imaging, as I mentioned, uh, this one is, um, I think from Dundee, they basically what it shows is that how you can use that simple IR camera to find out that the leaves that are transpiring have a lower temperature compared to the land that is slightly warmer or, or the shoots that don't transpire as much. So, you know, it's just the process of if, if it's a healthy plant and if it's properly transpiring, you could, you could just look at that from that angle. Or you could also look at the fact that the soil is now warm and wants more water. And similarly, if this was, you know, less blue and more green, then you would be uh, worried that the, the plant is not transpiring anymore. Um, so maybe it's, it's water stressed. And similarly to, you know, kind of look at the temperatures of um, animal bodies to detect any anomaly and, and then make sure that you segregate that particular an animal uh, from that livestock industry to kind of keep your system healthy. And agrivoltics, um, or um, is also something that's practiced in uh, in in one of some of the groups in in Lund, So I won't touch on that. How how can you use these solar panels to provide a shade to the plant to reduce evaporation? Because reduction of evaporation has suddenly become a very important thing. How can you use renewables to extract water? Now this one is slightly controversial, but I'm not going to put my opinions on you. I I'll just let you decide for yourself whether it's a good idea to use uh, solar panels to extract uh, groundwater abundantly. Um, up to a certain ex extent, it could be a good idea, but then are there any policies? How do we stop from making sure that the pristine water resource is not being abused um, in the process of providing clean water for agriculture? And then, you know, in the uh, value chain, I think this is something that I added after um, Hamza had pointed out something in the last lecture where he said that, uh, um, because if, if the vaccines are available, then the entire value chain is going to have these cold um, storage rooms or freezers uh, for the vaccine to be provided everywhere else in the world. And that would increase the, um, the, the load on energy and therefore the emissions um, on the, in the planet. And this is something that I'd seen like a couple of years ago. And I, and I quite liked the fact that in Africa and many other places, there's now solar run uh, cold rooms or solar run freezers uh, in the field, which is really revolutionizing agriculture in Africa. I think I copied a Forbes article um, somewhere as well. So you can just go and see the link. But you know, these are the things that people are thinking about, which is environment friendly, as well as now um, improving the value chain and improving kind of the, the food chain as well, like improving the shelf life of the crop and therefore reducing waste. So improving, uh, food on uh, food available by reducing the wastage of food and therefore profitability for that small farmer who was otherwise not able to transport it. And I think now I can hand over the floor to Dr. Bakker to uh, speak about the many things that are being happening at LAMS um, and, and also to, to shed light on some of these technologies which I just named and didn't really explain. So. Gee, thank you. Thank you for possible to share screen? Yes, I am stopping. So first of all, uh, I think a lot is happening uh, at LUMS and in other places around Pakistan as well. Um, agriculture may it seems that everybody is waking up to this, uh, uh, to this reality that uh, the way forward for our economy actually is via agriculture. Or usme itni abhi hamari productivity losses and there is so much to uh, to sort of uh, gain by doing uh, by doing uh, very simple interventions. But there is much that can be done. So a lot of young entrepreneurs are actually going into agriculture right now. If you are into technology, into entrepreneurship, or by the time I think you graduate, agar aapke pas abhi do teen saal hain, even if you are graduating soon, I think this is a this is a sector that you should uh, very carefully look at. Or is me nea karnekali a bohat kuch because uh, tradition, traditionally agriculture has been very, very um, conservative uh, in Pakistan. Or you need to see how we are taking all this. 
क्योंकि इसमें एक तो ये है कि हम वी लुक एट आई मीन समबडी विजिट्स ऑस्ट्रेलिया एंड देन दे लुक एट द फार्म एंड देन देयर इज दिस वाओ फैक्टर कि ओह जबरदस्त ये मशीनें इस्तेमाल की जा रही हैं और इस तरह के रोबोट्स डिप्लॉय किए जा रहे हैं एंड वी हैव दीस ड्रोन्स फ्लाइंग एंड इमीडिएटली पीपल ट्राई टू कॉपी कि बिल्कुल वही चीजें जो हैं वो हम अपने मुल्क में भी करने की कोशिश करें आई थिंक दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव पुट इन अ लॉट ऑफ थॉट कि इवन इफ वी आर कैपेबल ऑफ डूइंग सर्टेन थिंग्स ये हमें चीजें करनी भी चाहिए कि नहीं करनी चाहिए और खास तौर पे पाकिस्तान के अंदर एग्रीकल्चर को अगर आपको अपलिफ्ट करना है तो वट आर दॉर्ट ऑफ राइट राइट वेज ऑफ डूइंग इट एंड वेन आई से राइट देर आर सर्टनली सम एथिकल चॉइस इन दैट इज वेल तो उसमें सबसे जो प्राइमरी चीज दो दो चीजें बड़ी हैं एक तो ये कि ऑफ कोर्स वो सस्टेनेबल तरीके से होना चाहिए तो इवन इफ यू गो डिजिटल एग्रीकल्चर और ये सारी जो इंडस्ट्रियल एग्रीकल्चर की टेक्निक्स हैं दैट कम सेकेंड पहले प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी तो इंक्रीज करें ना सस्टेनेबिलिटी भी होती रहेगी बाद में सो दैट्स वन थिंग सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट वी शुड नॉट फॉर गेट दैट हमारा जो एग्रीकल्चरल सेक्टर है दे आर प्राइमरली स्मॉल फार्मर्स और ये इसको जरूर अपने जहन में रखिए कि हमारी मेजोरिटी जो है दीज आर वेरी वेरी स्मॉल फार्मर्स इफ यू लुक एट फार्म साइज अराउंड द वर्ल्ड तो हमारे जो बड़े फार्मर हैं वो भी एक्चुअली स्मॉल फार्मर्स में ही आते हैं तो इसलिए और जो बहुत हमारे जो छोटे फार्मर्स हैं वो तो उनका तो शुमार ही कहीं कर तो आई मीन थिंक ऑफ समबडी हु लैंड होल्डिंग ऑफ टू एकर्स थ्री एकर्स और उससे वो अपनी वो लाइवलीहुड बनाने की कोशिश कर रहा है when you start to talk about technology uh, in that context jab farmer ke paas education bhi nahi hai uh, resources bhi nahi hai so what kind of technologies are you talking about so yeah this is something that we uh, that we paid attention to aur main aapko kuch thodi si mere khayal mein cheeze aise things dikhata hu and then we can पहले तो अभी आपने जो कुछ थोड़ी सी टर्म्स सुन उनमें एक चीज जो थी वो प्रसिजन एग्रीकल्चर था वट वी आर सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंकिंग इज के ये जो प्रसिजन एग्रीकल्चर है ये कोई इतना नया आइडिया नहीं है आई मीन दिस इज एक्चुअली कमिंग फ्रॉम द नाइन्टीज जब ये नई नई सेटेलाइट टेक्नोलॉजी आती है वेरिएबल रेट टेक्नोलॉजी इंट्रोड्यूस हुई एंड ऑल ऑफ दिस वॉज एक्चुअली ऑलरेडी देर ये जो आप पिक्चर देख रहे हैं यहाँ पर आई मीन दिस इज दिस इज एटलीस्ट टू और थ्री डेकेड ओल्ड तो ये सारी चीजें जो है वो होनी शुरू हो गई थी नन ऑफ दिस वाज हैपनिंग इन पाकिस्तान सो एग्रीकल्चरल मैगनाइजेशन डिड हैपन इन पाकिस्तान इन द 60s दैट वाज द ग्रीन रेवोल्यूशन लेकिन ये प्रिसीजन एग्रीकल्चर हो नहीं सका क्योंकि द काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स दैट वाज पॉसिबल दैट वर पॉसिबल यूजिंग दिस काइंड ऑफ प्रिसीजन एग्रीकल्चर टेक्नोलॉजी उसके लिए जितनी कैपिटल इन्वेस्टमेंट चाहिए और uh, जितनी बड़ी-बड़ी मशीन्स चाहिए और जितने बड़े फार्म्स के ऊपर ये हो सकता है दैट वाज नॉट पॉसिबल और ये अभी भी नहीं हो पा रहा सो इसके लिए हम जो थोड़ी सी बात कर रहे हैं स्लाइटली यूजिंग अ स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फ्रेज हेयर व्हिच इज काइंड ऑफ द सेम बट इट्स अ इट्स अ डिफरेंट फिलॉसफी सो दिस इज एग्रीकल्चरल रोबोटिक्स और उसकी कुछ रिप्रेजेंटेटिव तस्वीरें आपको नीचे जो नजर आ रही हैं नाउ इफ यू कैन लुक एट दीज रोबोट्स आई जस्ट वांटेड टू आस्क द क्लास व्हाट डू यू नोट हेयर व्हाट आर द सेलिएंट फीचर्स ऑफ दीज मशीन्स दैट यू डोंट सी इन दिस ट्रैक्टर लाइक मशीन क्या ख्याल है आपका these are much smaller very good very good actually that's the that, that's the key difference or or koi bolna chahega is pe uh sir i think it's the use of electricity rather than fuel ha uh-huh, theek hai ye bhi hai unki electric drives hain uh, jo tractors hain wo diesel but that that's just propulsion uh, but yeah that that, that 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 is also a key technological sort of difference इनमें आईसी इंजन नहीं है ऊपर वाली जो मशीन है ट्रैक्टर के साथ जो है ये इसमें आईसी इंजन है बिग डिफरेंस और हाँ ठीक है ओके आई आई थिंक मोस्ट ऑफ यू आर नाउ गेटिंग इट देखो दीज आर जो आपने सबसे पहले बात की गई है ना दैट एक्चुअली इज दीज आर रियली लाइट वेट मशीन स्मॉलर मशीन 
ये अभी जिन फॉर्म्स के अंदर अवेलेबल हैं दे आर वेरी सोफिस्टिकेटेड आई मीन फॉर एग्जांपल दिस मशीन जो कि सबसे बॉटम राइट पे है दिस इज एन ऑस्ट्रेलियन एग्रीकल्चर रोबोटिक्स प्लेटफॉर्म आई सीन इट मैंने फर्स्ट हैंड देखा भी हुआ है इसको इसके ऊपर बेहद ताजा सेंसर वेंसर लगे हुए हैं और इसके ऊपर ये आप देखो ये कैनोपी सी बनी हुई है कैनोपी के ऊपर सोलर पैनल बने हुए इट्स लेडी बग डिजाइन जिसे वो कहते हैं इसके अंदर कहीं जो है वो लोकोमोशन भी है देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ सेंसर इन देर वो जो भी थोड़ी देर पहले बात कर रहे थे कि देर इज मे बी मैकेनिज्म टू वो वीड्स को प्लक आउट करने के लिए देर आर लिटिल लिटिल मैकेनिकल आर्म्स इन साइड इट्स अ वेरी सोफिस्टिकेटेड मशीन लेकिन आप देखो कि इसका फुटप्रिंट जो है इस तरह की मशीनों के मुकाबले में जो है वो बहुत छोटा है and i think this is another revolution that is going to take place going forward yahan par hum in uh, precision agriculture ya agricultural robotics technologies se bahut sa fertilizer bacha sakenge pesticides bacha sakenge aur cheeze kar sakenge i think the very nature of these technology is also going to change khas taur pe ye jo mobility agricultural mobility so just fast forward the maybe 10 years 20 years kis tarah ki industry इंडस्ट्री है जो कि पाकिस्तान में और पाकिस्तान की बात कर लेते हैं जो बहुत फ्लरिश कर रही है और वो फार्मर्स को इनपुट्स प्रोवाइड करती है मशीनरी प्रोवाइड करती है एंड इफ वी गो दिस राउट जो कि लग रहा है कि होगा आज नहीं होगा तो पांच साल बाद होगा पांच साल बाद नहीं होगा तो दस साल बाद होगा यूजुअली ट्रेल तो वॉट यू थिंक Excellent, excellent. ये ये जो आपने अभी बात की है, I think that is the key point. कि ये अगर सारा कुछ all of this actually <laughs> this dream uh, comes true, तो I mean हमारा तो farmer सारा जो है वो छोटा farmer है, and uh, uh, we are actually looking at uh, हमारी half of the population is वो uh, agriculture से जुड़ी हुई है, तो उनका क्या बनेगा? तो so, यहाँ पर दो बड़ी fundamental changes आपको नजर आ रही हैं. एक तो ये कि ट्रैक्टर इंडस्ट्री सारी उड़ गई क्योंकि वी आर नाउ मेकिंग दीज वेरी लाइट मशीन दे हैव टू रीन वेंट अगर हम ये एग्रीकल्चर इनपुट्स बहुत स्मार्टली करेंगे तो जो फर्टिलाइजर वाले लोग हैं पेस्टिसाइड्स वाले बनाने वाले लोग हैं दे वुड हैव टू ट्रांसफॉर्म देयर बिजनेस वो इतने हाई वॉल्यूम्स पे चीजें मेरा निशान को बनानी चाहिए क्योंकि उसकी शायद जरूरत नहीं रहेगी लेकिन जो की आपने अभी थोड़ी देर पहले बात की वो वाकई ये है कि लेबर का क्या होगा सो मीन जब पहले हम ऑफ लैंड को हम कर रहे थे अब वो इंडिविजुअल प्लांट्स तक मामला आ गया है हम पत्तों को भी देखना शुरू हो गए हैं इंडिविजुअल फ्रूट्स को भी हम इंस्पेक्ट करना शुरू कर दिया तो ऑल ऑफ दैट वुड टेक्नोलॉजिकली भी पॉसिबल लेकिन क्या हमें ये करना है इज दिस द पाथ दैट वी शुड इवन मूव टुवर्ड्स कि क्या सोशल इंपैक्ट्स हो सकते हैं सो इफ यू आर एन इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट इफ यू मेक ट्रैक्टर्स ऑफ कोर्स यू आर यू शुड बी वर्ल्ड वो तो हमने अभी बात कर ली इफ मेक फर्टिलाइजर्स इट शुड बी वर्ड लेकिन व्हाट अबाउट लेबर सर सो देयर इज आल्सो द इशू रिगार्डिंग ऑफ फार्मर्स मेनी ऑफ दीज एज यू सेड देयर आर सब्सिस्टेंस लेवल फार्मर्स हु हु आर मोर मोर ऑफन देयर नॉट अनएबल टू मेक एंड्स मीट सो विद द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ दीज मशीन्स दे मोस्ट ऑफ देम वुड what little they earn they that too will go away, go away because the the uh, rich farmers they will be able to modernize and increase their profits and the smaller ones they won't be able to com- compete so most of them would probably be forced to turn to crime to make ends meet so we will be Excellent. looking at 
large increases in crime rate all across areas where such changes have been uh, put in place excellent excellent parte bahut bilkul and i think that is the key point aur dekho abhi is waqt pakistan mein jitne log digital agriculture ki baat kar rahe hain zyada tar log jo hain wo actually 90s ke precision agriculture ki hi abhi baat kar rahe hain wo variable rate technology aur ye satellite imaging wagaira ki kyunki wo bhi cheeze nahi na hui lekin that requires these farm sizes to be pretty large aur wo unki taraf se push hai ki bhai ab aap ye chote farmer ko nikale de unko kuch aur करने के लिए हम आमा करें मे बी दुड गो टू दिटीज या कुछ और वो रूरल uh, इकोनॉमी को uh, और तरह से जो है वो रिवायर किया जाए और एग्रीकल्चर में सिर्फ ये बड़े प्लेयर्स आ जाएं क्योंकि ऑल ऑफ दिस टेक्नोलॉजी इज नॉट मेकिंग सेंस फॉर फॉर दो एकड़ फार्म या तीन एकड़ फार्म ठीक है तो ये हम सबको बड़ा माइंडफुल रहना चाहिए इवन इफ यू डोंट गो टूवर्ड्स दिस एग्रीकल्चर रोबोटिक्स रेवोल्यूशन ठीक है इवन इफ यू डोंट डू दैट ये जो पुरानी चीजें हैं जो कि अभी करंट वेव इन पाकिस्तान इज एक्चुअली इन द नेम ऑफ एग्रीकल्चरल रोबोटिक्स वो थोड़ी सी पुरानी चीजें ही हम इस्तेमाल करने की तरफ जा रहे हैं वी शुड बी वेरी वेरी माइंडफुल ऑफ वेयर ऑल दिस इज गोइंग अच्छा अब इस कांटेक्स्ट में दिस इज वेयर अ लॉट ऑफ द वर्क दैट वी आर डूइंग इन एट द सेंटर तो मैं आपको बहुत ज्यादा टाइम नहीं लूंगा बट आई जस्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ एक मैं आपको ये जो पिक्चर्स दिखा रहा हूं इस वक्त टीम के ऊपर दिस इज दिस दीस आर दीस आर ऑल थिंग्स दैट वी हैव डेवलप्ड Uh, here at at lums and they have been uh, deployed in the field and uh, uh, they have been tested as well so just to sort of give you uh, an idea of what these things are uh, so isme jaise ye sab se jo upper left corner pe jo ek map ko tasveer dikha raha hu this is basically a probe um ye fauzi aap aap i'm sorry mai uh, should i stop here No, no, sir. You should talk because uh, कुछ बच्चों ने हाथ उठाया है, तो I thought maybe you should just introduce it in one go, and then they will ask you questions if they have any. Oh, I see. अच्छा मैंने वो ऐसे में screen full की हुई है मुझे participants की list नजर नहीं आ रही. Maybe I should just. Sir, so don't worry. Uh, I can just go with the uh, the points, and then they will. अच्छा चलो ठीक है. I'll I'll not take much much of your time. वैसे तो अच्छा अगर Q&A दरमियान में होता रहे तो that's actually preferable. I just couldn't see the अब अब मुझे नजर आ रही है participants. So मैंने मेरे पास उनमें शायद Manal, do you want to say something? Please go ahead. Yes, sir. I wanted to ask, um, what is what is the extent of the the trade off as far as energy cost is concerned? Because the cost of uh, making this equipment, uh, not just in terms of the expenses, but also the environmental impact of making the this kind of equipment, of investing in, you know, technology that would require material that might not be renewable. um resources that uh, you know the waste that would be produced from the manufacture of these machines so how far is that trade off really worth it ye bas bada acha aapka question hai this is an excellent question mera khayal hai bahut logon ne agriculture mein is question ko nahi dekha but uh, to give you sort of um, analogy keh le ya analogical agar hum thoda sa reasoning kare to aapko pata hai ye electrical vehicles ke upar jo hai wo isi kisam ke itrazat hain i mean if you look at for example the battery infrastructure that will be needed for electrical vehicles jo hain to wo usko kaise aap dispose of karenge uska environmental footprint kya hoga kuch logon ne us pe bhi sawalat jo hai wo uthaye hain but as far as agriculture is concerned aur agriculture mein jis tarah ki technologies ki hum baat kar rahe hain if really the saving that we think that will be done khas aur pe fertilizers ki pesticides ki pani ki i think uh, wo bada huge offset hoga uske muqable mein ये जो टेक्नोलॉजी की मैन्युफैक्चरिंग है उससे रिलेटेड जो चीजें मशीनें बनाई जाएंगी बैटरीज बनाई जाएंगी वगैरह वगैरह जो मैन्युफैक्चरिंग प्रोसेसेस हैं जो एनर्जी आप बात कर रही हैं एनर्जी का इस्तेमाल जो है मेरा ख्याल है ये शायद उतना नहीं होगा और खास तौर पर एनर्जी के लिए भी वंस अगेन इफ यू गो टूवर्ड्स इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स ये जो आपने देखा होगा पहले हम जो रोबोट्स दिखा रहे थे वो दे आर इलेक्ट्रिकली ड्रिवन तो उनकी एमिशन नहीं होंगी once again battery wala masla jo hai wo apni jagah pe maujood hai but that technology is also also improving uh, but, but i to my knowledge i i, I don't have a study in mind jahan par is 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 sawal ka jo hai wo mere paas exact answer hai but i think agriculture mein this is less of a problem than than other sectors especially transportation but excellent point thank you theek hai chalo let let me actually just start start of uh, go forward theek hai ye ab aap dekho ye jo ab hum aapko gadgets se thodi si dikha raha hu these are all sort of home grown hai aur inko humne thoda sa istemal bhi kiya hai these are all extremely low power jo bhi thodi der pehle manal baat kar rahi thi uh, extremely low power technologies hain uh, 
इनका वैसे कोई अपना फुटप्रिंट जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा नहीं होना चाहिए और उसकी वजह से जिस किस्म की सेविंग एक्सपेक्टेड है वो देखें दीज कैन बी ह्यूज तो जस्ट टू टू सॉर्ट ऑफ गो बड़ी क्विकली मैं आपको बता सकता हूँ अपर लेफ्ट कॉर्नर पे ये जो एक चीज है दिस इज अ लिटिल प्रोब इस रोबोटिक प्रोब फ्लोटिंग इन 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 वाटर और इसके ऊपर जो है वो वाटर क्वालिटी के सेंसर्स लगे हुए हैं तो वी हैव यूज्ड दीस प्रोब्स टू मैप वाटर क्वालिटी इन कैनाल्स इन रिवर्स भी बल्कि हमने रावी के अंदर ये प्रोब्स छोड़े और उसके जरिए से हमने एक्सट्रीमली हाई एक्यूरेसी की और एक्सट्रीमली हाई रेजोल्यूशन जो है हमने मैपिंग की है वाटर क्वालिटी के मुख्तलि बारे में अच्छा इस तरह से अब यहां पर आप देखें ये दिस दिस मिडिल पिक्चर आई डोंट नो इफ यू कैन सी द कर्सर दैट आई एम मूविंग ये मैं कर्सर मूव कर रहा हूं आपको नजर आ रहा है अच्छा तो इफ यू कैन सी सो 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 दिस दिस एक्चुअली इज अ स्नो पैक मॉनिटरिंग सेंसर इसमें हमने ये स्वाद के एरिया के अंदर हमने ये लगाए हुए हैं सेंसर्स और उसमें हम स्नो पैक को यानी बर्फ कितनी पड़ रही है उसको हम मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं तो एक्चुअली लिटिल अल्ट्रासाउंड हेयर इट इज बीमिंग अल्ट्रासाउंड डाउन और जितना स्नो ऊपर 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 होती है ये अभी अभी ये बल्कि इनफैक्ट अभी लास्ट वीकेंड पे ये स्नो पड़नी शुरू हो गई है और बाय द एंड ऑफ द सीजन दिस होल पोल वुड एक्चुअली बर्ड एंड वी आर मेजरिंग दिस अच्छा इसके ही नीचे इसी कैचमेंट uh, एरिया के अंदर नीचे स्ट्रीम्स के अंदर भी हमने सेंसर्स लगाए हुए हैं जैसे आपको यहाँ नजर आ रहे हैं ठीक है तो ये तो एक्चुअली वो सुहाद का सेंसर तो नहीं है दिस इज समेर इन पंजाब बट दिस काइंड ऑफ सेंसर्स दे आल्सो मॉनिटरिंग मॉनिटर द स्ट्रीम सो टुगेदर दिस कैन एक्चुअली मेक एन अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम कि जब तो मेल्ट हो रही है या पहाड़ के ऊपर जो है वो बारिश हुई है और उससे नीचे स्ट्रीम के ऊपर पानी तो एकदम से ज्यादा नहीं आ रहा इनफैक्ट वेन दीज रिसेंट फ्लैश फ्लड फ्लड हैपेंड इन इन सुहाद एक्चुअली वी वी गिव दीस वार्निंग्स टू द लोकल पीडीएमएस एंड डीडीएमएस के भी ये कुछ होने वाला है ठीक है सो दीस आर अगेन एक्सट्रीमली लो कॉस्ट um uh, low power uh, applications all built by us and and, and being sort of uh, um deployed acha kuch tarah thodi si curious thi cheeze hain what is this this is actually is a little drone that you can actually use to sample water so jisme ye drone hai ye khud hi aap ek water body ke upar leke jate hain it climbs towards the water body by itself iske niche agar aap war kare to ek wo straw sa aapko nazar aa raha hai so it literally just sucks the water uh, out from the water body into its belly and then bring it back aur agar aapko kabhi kisi gande nahale ke kareeb jaane ka ittefaq hua ho ya aur wahan se agar aapne kabhi ye pani ka sample lene ki koshish ki ho ya kisi marsh se ya kisi aur jagah se you can you can appreciate ki ye kitna mushkil kaam hai aur uh, so this is something that we have prototype actually ek hamara ek student group tha jisne ye uh, ye prototype um what i'm uh, sort of uh, hinting towards here is so this is another drone that goes along the length of the uh, channel like a canal aur wo karta hi hai ki it actually maps the deposition of silt on these channels it's a very sophisticated system uh it's like a self driving car um iski navigation bahut mushkil hai kyunki it has to traverse way for very very long distances to uske dauran ye chalta rehta hai aur ye uh, us channel ke jaise canal hai ya koi choti si stream hai uski cross sections measure karta hai and once we get the cross sections back then we can compare them to the cross sections maybe a year before ki us pe kitni silt baithi hai matti baithi hai to ko bhal kehte hain isko so this is acha jo aakhri cheez ke bare mein baat karna chahta tha maybe we can talk a little bit more about it this is this little soil moisture sensor and this is one of those things baaki cheeze to badi achhi hain i mean we have been deploying them in, in some numbers as well aur humne kafi uh, agencies ki madad bhi ki hai लेकिन ये जो आखिरी चीज मैं आपको बताने लगा दिस इज एक्चुअली वन थिंग दैट हैज एक्चुअली नॉट ओनली बीन वेरी सक्सेसफुल इन द लैब इन टर्म्स ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी बट वी हैव बीन एबल टू रोल आउट एज वेल और ये एक जैसे मैं कह रहा था कि इट्स अ लिटिल सोइल मॉइस्चर सेंसर इट हैज दिस स्टिक लाइक थिंग जो कि सोइल के अंदर जो है जिसके आगे एक सेंसर लगा हुआ है तो जब आप इरिगेशन करते हैं पानी सोइल के अंदर आता है तो इट इट काइंड ऑफ सेंसेस या अगर पानी खत्म हो जाता है सॉइल मॉइस्चर का कंटेंट जो है वो खत्म होना शुरू हो जाता है तो इट सेंड्स एन अलर्ट उसके ऊपर छोटा सा रेडियो एंटेना लगा हुआ है एंड वी गेट टू नो कि ये क्या हो रहा है नाउ दिस इज समथिंग दैट वी हैव एक्चुअली रोल्ड आउट एंड डिप्लॉयड इन वेरी वेरी लार्ज नंबर्स और ये प्रिसाइसली इस तरह की टेक्नोलॉजी है जो के स्मॉल फार्मर्स के लिए हमने जेन में रखी बनाई दीज आर आल्सो अगेन अदर ग्लिम्सेस जो मैं आपको बता रहा था ना स्नोफॉल मॉनिटरिंग के जो सॉल्यूशंस हैं सो आई विल नॉट गो इनटू ग्रेट डिटेल एक्सेप्ट फॉर दैट यू कैन जस्ट अप्रिशिएट के ये वो जो स्ट्रीम पे लगा हुआ सेंसर है वहीं पर इस के अंदर 
और ये जो लिटिल ग्राफ दैट आई आई कैन शो यू हियर ये हमारी ही मेजरमेंट्स हैं कि इसी जगह की जब ये 28 अगस्त के करीब जो है अगर आपको याद होगा फ्लैश फ्लड्स आए थे वी वर एबल टू सी दीस दीस फ्लड्स एंड 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 सेंड वार्निंग्स रेन इवेंट्स भी आपको नजर आ रहे हैं वगैरह वगैरह दीस आर दोस वाटर क्वालिटी प्रोब जिनकी मैं बात कर रहा था जी जी सर कैन यू मेंशन द वाई एक्सिस वेरिएबल दैट वी हैव इन द प्रीवियस ग्राफ ये इस वाले में या व्हाट इज इन द वाई एक्सिस जस्ट द हाइट यानी ये यही आप पिक्चर को देख के अंदाजा लगा सकते हैं ना कि जब पानी ऊपर आ गया होगा तो दिस इज बेसिकली जस्ट मेंशनिंग द द हाइट वैसे हम फ्लो मेजर कर रहे हैं ये जो हाइट से हम इनडायरेक्टली जो फ्लो मेजर कर रहे हैं बट यू कैन यू कैन थिंक ऑफ इट एज़ हाइट and you can see ke wo jab barish hoti hai ye 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 jo green wala jo ye rain event hai wo jo barish hoti hai to mean bahut zyada ekdam spike up hoti hai aur ye hum jo measure kar rahe hain ye niche downstream kar rahe hain but we also know ke upar pahad pe kya ho raha hai we have sensors installed up up, up in the uh, in the mountains as well um is tarah se main aapko jo bata raha tha water quality se related again each of these the story that uh, i can spend uh, a lot of time on but just to give you a glimpse of ki hum kya kar rahe hain अभी क्या करते हैं हम कि वी काइंड ऑफ फिगर आउट कि आज मैंने अगर वीट लगाया है तो इसको चार से पांच इरीगेशन चाहिए होंगी हार्वेस्टिंग uh, से पहले तीन चार माह के अंदर एंड देन दो हफ्ते बाद लगा दो फिर चार हफ्ते बाद लगा दो फिर छह हफ्ते बाद लगा दो वी डोंट रियली नो कि प्लांट को एक्चुअली पानी कितना चाहिए सो समाइम्स फार्मर्स आर ओवर इरीगेटिंग समाइम्स दे आर अंडर इरीगेटिंग और वो उससे प्लांट स्ट्रेस में चला जाता है ईच टाइम द प्लांट गोज इन स्ट्रेस जैसे कल बारिश हुई है और अगर ये फसल खड़ी होती और उसको मैंने परसों पानी लगाया होता और कल बारिश हो गई देन एक्चुअली आई एम किलिंग द प्लांट मैं उसको वो uh, उसको पानी की जरूरत नहीं थी लेकिन मैं उसको चौक कर रहा हूँ ऑन दी अदर हैंड अगर उसको पानी की जरूरत थी और मैंने कई दिन गुजर गए हैं और उसको मैं पानी नहीं लगा सका तो उसकी वजह से उसको स्ट्रेस आता है तो हमारी काफी ये लॉसेज जो है वो इस वजह से होते हैं बिकॉज वी डोंट रियली नो वॉट द प्लांट नीड्स और प्लांट को कैसे कैसे पता चलेगा कि क्या क्या उसको पानी की जरूरत है उसके लिए हम सॉयल में मॉइस्चर का कॉन्टेंट देखते हैं जमीन में पानी देखते And that is something that we are sensing here and sending alerts. So, अब ये हमने dozens of these we have we have now deployed uh, farmers in multiple districts in Punjab and other places as well. Um, so, so this is a little configuration. Uh, there are all these sensors in the field. Or so there is a little gateway or gateway से जो है वो server पे जा रहा है and server से we can we can take a look. I I can talk more about the uh, computer science वाले जो students हैं जब उनको इसमें interest हो. Now the reason that I am mentioning this. Let, let, let me just हाँ um थोड़ा सा skip करता हूँ इसको भी skip करता हूँ so you can see here I mean there are there are all these sort of deployments all over Punjab और नजर क्या आ रहा था farmer को this is maybe something that that we can look at तो ये हमारा एक छोटा सा portal है portal के अंदर आप जाएंगे अपने farm में चले जाएं farm से आपको so this is what you are you are you are seeing तो आप देखिएगा देर आर दी सॉर्ट ऑफ सो ये मॉइस्चर लेवल है और एक्स एक्सिस पे आप क्या लेके टाइम चल रहा है और एवरी टाइम यू इरीगेट द मॉइस्चर लेवल जम्प्स अप ठीक है उसके बाद नेचुरली इट सॉर्ट ऑफ स्टार्ट टू कम डाउन एक दिन दो दिन तीन दिन चार दिन और उसके बाद फिर देन देर इज अ लोअर सॉर्ट ऑफ बार जो जहां पर अंडर इरीगेशन है यानी कि अब पानी को पानी लगाने की जरूरत है और अगर इफ यू टाइम दैट करेक्टली तो आप फिर दोबारा से इरीगेशन करेंगे एंड वापस आ जाए ठीक है तो देन दिस फ्रॉम दिस पोर्टल द फार्मर गेट्स टू सी किस कब इरिगेशन की जरूरत है और हमने बड़ी बड़ी मददार चीजें इसमें देखी आई मीन वी हैव सीन फार्मर बिहेवियर एंड वी हैव सीन हाउ द फार्मर्स टू इंटरेक्ट विद इट जैसे मैं अभी आपको थोड़ी देर पहले बता रहा था सो आई मीन जस्ट लुक एट दिस येलो बैंड है इसके अंदर अंदर आपको सॉइल मॉइस्चर को रखना है लुक एट वॉट्स हैपनिंग हेयर ठीक है यहाँ पर अब नाव कुछ अरसे से पानी आपको इरीगेशन दी हुई थी It was going towards under irrigation, लेकिन एकदम से क्या हुआ कि बारिश हो गई और बारिश के साथ साथ नहर का पानी भी अवेलेबल था तो फार्मर ने बजाय इसके वो वेट करता उसने वो भी लगा दिया एंड लुक लुक एट व्हाट्स हैपन टू द टू द मॉइस्चर लेवल ये जो इतना अरसा पानी जो है वो ज्यादा रहा है फील्ड कैपेसिटी से 
فارم کے اندر یو یو مسٹ ہیو سفرڈ اے بگ لاس اسی طرح سے یہاں پر بھی صرف ہیبیچولی کیونکہ ہر پانچ چھ دن کے بعد پانی لگانا ہے دے اگین اریگیٹ اینڈ دس ہیز بین اریگیشن ود آؤٹ ایڈوائس جس میں نے یہاں پر اس کو لکھا ہوا اس کے بعد دین وی گو بیک ٹو دا فارمر اس کو کہتے ہیں یار کیا تم کر رہے ہو مطلب یعنی کہ ذرا تھوڑا سا ہم تمہیں جب ایڈوائز دے رہے ہیں تم ایڈوائز کے مطابق چلو نا لوک ایٹ واٹس ہیپننگ یہ ٹھیک ہے یہاں پر اٹس گوئنگ ڈاؤن اینڈ ڈاؤن اینڈ ڈاؤن ہم اسے کہتے ہیں کہ یار آپ اریگیٹ کرو تو فارمر رپورٹس بتایا کہ ہم نے تو اریگیشن کر لی ہے اور ہم اپنے یا دیکھ رہے ہیں پورٹل کے اوپر یہ تو موسچر لیول اوپر نہیں جا رہا ہے دین وی گیٹ ٹو فائنڈ آؤٹ کہ وہ جو فارم مینیجر ہے وہ اپنے فارم اونر کو غلط بتا رہا ہے کہ میں نے اریگیشن کر لیا تو بیسیکلی اسٹیلنگ ڈیجیٹل یا وٹ ایور فارم ان اب ہم نے اس کو دوبارہ کہا کہ یار اب کرو اس کو اریگیشن اینڈ دین دس اریگیشن کیپ سو ا لاٹ اف دس سوشل بیہیویئر ایز ویل وی کین لک ایٹ جب یہ چیزیں جو ہیں وہ ہوتی ہیں اس کے اندر سو مین دیٹس 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 دا پاور اف دس ٹیکنالوجی آئی مین سملر ٹو ہاؤ یو کین مینٹین ٹیمپریچر ان یور روم یو کین مینٹین موسچر ان یور کانٹینٹ ان یور سوائل ایز ویل and uh, every time you go over or go under you are going to suffer yield loss aur agar isko aap prevent kar sakte hain and if you can just uh, jaise kehte hain na make to the finish finish line aapki yield bahut achhi hogi at least pani ki wajah se jo hai wo aapko problems nahi aayenge now we have worked quite quite hard ki iski hum price aur iski jo hai usability aur usko ek aise level pe le aaye jisse ye bada uh, farmer ke liye jo hai wo bada ek useful cheez jo hai wo ho sake um secondly you can see that this is an assistive technology it's not replacing the farmer it's just giving it giving it advice um we are not making a robot that would do the irrigation by itself ya jo bhi uh jo advice ke upar jo decision le raha hai wo farmer hi le raha hai and again this is also another uh philosophical difference between the kind of digital agriculture that we are doing and the kind of digital agriculture that you see uh, at other places as well So, my friend, like this is, uh, I can, I can probably stop here. Uh, there is, there is quite a lot that I can show. If you guys have any questions or comments, I can, uh, I, I, I can try to answer. If you guys raise your hands, then I would know who to call. Adeem, Adeem go ahead. Uh, yes, I had a question regarding one of the early slides in which there was a tractor which was covering a, a large area and spraying fertilizers or pesticides or something on the crops. And there were the, the other compact machines with solar panels and uh, other like uh, things. So I just had a question that those tractors were, were working on a very large scale, like at at mm. the same time they were spray covering a very yeah. large field on which they were spraying the pesticides or the fertilizers however on the other side the the, the other machines were very small so like small. and we yeah. also learned that in agriculture timing is uh, is a very important thing like we have to very timely uh, give pesticides or like fertilizers to the crops so how is it possible that with with the use of such small machines that will be able to re, uh, fulfill our deadlines excellent so adeen so there, there will not be one machine but there will be dozens of these machines working together many many small machines in the in the farm so that's the once again that's the future or that's the vision that these people have ke choti choti compact platforms honge kyunki when we have a very big machine that is actually going through the soil تو وہ سوائل کو کمپیکٹیفائی کرتا ہے ٹھیک ہے تو ہمارے ہمارے ملکوں میں شاید ہی اتنا بڑا پرابلم نہ ہو ویسے ہے بھی کمپیکٹیفیکیشن ہوتی ہے سوائل کی لیکن خاص طور پہ جیسے اگر آپ تھنک اباؤٹ انگلینڈ آل دا ٹائم تو وہاں پر جب آپ یہ بڑی بڑی مشینیں چلاتے ہیں تو اس کی وجہ سے سوائل جو ہے وہ کمپریس ہوتا ہے وہ کمپیکٹیفائی ہوتا ہے تو دے ایکچولی وانٹ دیز لٹل لائٹ میٹ میٹ مشین بٹ دین دے آر تھنکنگ اباؤٹ مینی آف دیم کہ جب وہ ڈھیر سارے ہوں گے وہ کام کر رہے ہوں گے milke okay. so that, that's another technological barrier that's that uh, will be crossed uh, in fact my my own phd thesis was on machines uh, many many of these robot machines working together and this was 15 years back uh, we were not thinking of agriculture at that time so ye technology bhi mature ho ho rahi hai aur ho hogi isme there are lots of machines doing work but once again there is no human uh, maybe there are things flying up in the air there are things in the on the on the road 
uh, roads are already on the ground, uh, but uh, but no human. But but that that's how they are going to make sure that what time pe ho sara kuch show up rahe and all that. Does that answer the question or? Uh, yeah, it does. But still, like if there be a number of machines, like such mm-hmm. machines. then it will be even more expensive for and i don't think that even large scale farmers or rich farmers in pakistan would be, would be even to uh, would be able to afford those even absolutely absolutely and i think yeah, this this kind of a vision isliye main aapko dikha raha tha ke i mean it's it's one thing that people when show you that this is the future and then you should think about ke yaar ye kis kism ki is ke scale ki hum baat kar rahe hain jahan par when it starts to make sense economically and even socially as well so this this kind of this philosophy of having these multiple robots moving about, about doing things this has already happened in the uh, logistics industry have you seen amazon ke warehouses mein kya ho raha hai aajkal i don't know if anybody has seen videos of how they are managing their warehouses these days there are these thousands of these robots who are moving about on a so there is a big um, a warehouse hai aur uske andar there are these cabinets aur low cabinets tak nahi ja rahe the cabinets are coming to you और उसमें जो है वो चीजें आगे पीछे जा रही हैं आई वाज अ ग्रेजुएट स्टूडेंट पीपल वर थिंकिंग अबाउट दोस थिंग्स अब वो उन्होंने कर दिया है बट दिस इज एमेजॉन दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट इसी तरह से एग्रीकल्चर में एग्रीकल्चरल फील्ड इज अ वेरी वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड एनवायरमेंट मोर कॉम्प्लिकेटेड फैक्ट्री फ्लोर और अ वेयर हाउस दैट इज वाई इट विक मोर टाइम फॉर दीज मशीन टू कम इन टू द एग्रीकल्चरल फील्ड बट स्टिल इट्स डूएबल इट्स वेरी डूएबल क्वेश्चन रियल इज की कौन करेगा और किसके लिए करेगा Amazon can do it. Maybe, okay, yeah, Monsanto can do it, and Nestle can do it. But what about the two-acre farmer? उसके लिए हमें थोड़ा सा मेरे ख्याल में मुख्तलिफ सोचना है. Or uh, so the technology is going to be there. The te- technology is also going to be very, very inexpensive as as we go forward. Um, एक और concept जो बड़े लोग जिसके बारे में सोच रहे हैं वो ये है कि they try to make this analogy with the cell phone. जैसे आप देखें कि इफ यू हैव द आईफोन यू कैन एक्चुअली डाउनलोड सेवरल एप्स ऑन इट और उससे कई तरह के काम लिए जा सकते हैं पीपल ऑल्सो इन एग्रीकल्चर रोबोटिक्स थिंक अबाउट कि यार वो बंदा जो कि इस तरह की मशीन बनाएगा दैट इज लिटल मशीन दैट इज सो वर्सिटाइल दैट यू कैन एक्चुअली पुट एग्रीकल्चरल एप्स ऑन इट अपनी मर्जी का इस पे आप स्प्रेयर uh, लगा लें मनिपुलेटर लगा लें वीडिसाइड करने वाला लगा दें सो दैट वुड बी द विनर वन डे तो ये इस तरह की चीजें इस वक्त जो है वो लोग लोग सोच रहे हैं एंड इफ यू आर इनटू टेक्नोलॉजी इट्स अ वेरी एक्साइटिंग टाइम टू बी बी इनटू दैट और ये बिल्कुल दिस इज एट द फ्रंटियर ऑफ वेयर थिंग्स आर बट बट आई कीप कीप रिपीटिंग कि ये चीजें कर सकते हैं हम भी कर सकते हैं क्या हमें ये करनी चाहिए कि नहीं करनी चाहिए दैट्स अ डिफरेंट क्वेश्चन हमजा यस सर माय क्वेश्चन इज रिगार्डिंग द वेरियस लाइक इलेक्ट्रॉनिक डिवाइसेस एंड सेंसर्स दैट यू इंट्रोड्यूस्ड like the ones that you have installed in the streams of sawat so sir aap keh rahe the aap usse jo hai measurement le rahe hain agar over the period of time agar hum wo data compile karte rahe to would it be possible with the same technology and the same resources to predict as well oh absolutely actually that is the dream in fact abhi hum jo hum kar rahe hain wo uh, so abhi hame do winter seasons ho gaye hain Uh, हमने ये स्वात में uh, गबीन जब्बा के एरिया के अंदर हमने इनको वेर आर यू फ्रॉम आप किस एरिया से बिलोंग करते हैं मैं तो सर मुल्तान से आप मुल्तान से बिलोंग करते हैं एनीबडी हियर फ्रॉम स्वात अच्छा अगर नहीं है दैट्स फाइन तो वहां पर हम ये मालम जब्बा का आपने शायद मे भी नाम सुना होगा दैट्स नॉट सो फार अवे फ्रॉम वेयर वी आर तो वहां पर हम तकरीबन दो विंटर सीजंस हो गए हैं जब हमने ये इस तरह की चीजें कर रहे थे नाउ व्हाट वी आर डूइंग इज जो आप exactly baat kar rahe the ki now since we have this continuous data we are also now looking at the snow from the satellite aur hum satellite se kyunki ye to sirf ek point pe measurement kar rahe hain the satellite would be able to give us uh, the measurement pure ke pure basin ke andar jo hai jo choti si catchment hai uske upar hum dekh sakte hain and if we can do that then we can in theory find the amount of snow that is there for example pure season mein aur uh, comes april or march uh, we can predict कि अगर एकदम से टेम्परेचर ऊपर शूट करता है तो नीचे डाउनस्ट्रीम जो है वो स्नो मेल्ट कितना होगा देर आर वेरी गुड मॉडल्स अवेलेबल हाइड्रोलॉजिकल मॉडल्स बाय विच वी कैन एक्चुअली डू फोरकास्टिंग और देखो अगर यही काम अगर हम पूरे पाकिस्तान में कर लें तो वी कैन एक्चुअली हैव वेरी गुड फोरकास्टिंग बेस्ड ऑन दिस एज वेल 
or uh, wabda and some other agencies met our med department they actually do operate weather stations unko kehte hain glaciers ke upar aur hamare northern areas mein for precisely this but, but the scale at which we are doing nobody has this if we can do it at this scale chote chote catchments ke andar bhi agar hum isko lagana shuru kar de then then we will be able to do very good predictions azan yes sir is it isn't it too optimistic like we have like lots of variable available so how you are managing all the uh, independent variables and figuring out uh, the uh, better conditions or predictions about a particular thing क्लोजेस अगर सिर्फ हम डेटा इकट्ठा कर लें तो बहुत कुछ किया जा सकता है एक्चुअली फिजिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द फिनोमिना इज इज इक्वली इम्पोर्टेंट और वो इन तमाम एरिया के अंदर बहुत ज्यादा मौजूद है जैसे मैं आपको हाइड्रोलॉजी की मिसाल देता हूँ हाइड्रोलॉजी जो है एज ए डिसिप्लिन इट मूव फ्रॉम स्मॉल डेटा टू बिग डेटा अराउंड द नाइनटीज यानी पहले बिल्कुल सिचुएशन उलट थी कि लोगों को ये उनके फिजिकल फिनोमिन तो पता थे कि कैसे वो होते हैं जैसे स्नो कैसे मेल्ट होती है और रन ऑफ कैसे होता है और वगैरह वगैरह बट दे डेंट हैव ऑब्जर्वेशन फिजिकल ऑब्जर्वेशन नहीं थी उनके पास अब मामला बिल्कुल उलट गया उसकी सबसे बड़ी वजह जो है वो सेटेलाइट रिमोट सेंसिंग टेक्नोलॉजी है जिसकी वजह से डेटा बहुत ज्यादा अवेलेबल है आपको टोपोग्राफी मिल सकती है आपको जैसे मैं आपको बता रहा था कि स्नो वाटर इक्वलेंट्स मिल सकते हैं बट देन जस्ट डेटा इज नॉट इनफ उसके साथ साथ जब तक आपको फिजिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ द फिनोमिन नहीं होगी दिस इज वेयर द साइंस एक्चुअली कम्स इन सो साइंस इज नॉट जस्ट प्रोसेसिंग द डेटा इट्स ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंडिंग द फिजिकल फिनोमिन एज वेल और वो हम थोड़ा सा हमारे ग्रुप के अंदर भी हम ये काम करते हैं वट वी डू इज दैट वी यूज दिस डेटा टू कैलिब्रेट मॉडल्स विच इज what everybody does uh, so hame ko data pe bahut zyada iman nahi hai everything is not primarily data driven aur ye badi achhi aapka point tha ke is pe thoda sa criticism bhi of course hota hai ke everything cannot be just data driven shamir aap kuch kehna cha rahe ठीक है डज डज एनी वन एल्स है क्वेश्चन और कॉमेंट बिफोर आई गिव द फ्लोर बैक टू फॉजिया ठीक सो आई थिंक इट्स शामिल प्रॉब्लम गलती से उन्होंने अनम्यूट कर दिया था दिस थैंक यू सो मच फॉर दिस बिकॉज ऑफ कोर्स एज आई सेड दिस इज नॉट माय एरिया ऑफ एक्सपर्टीज एंड आई डोंट रीड अ लॉट अबाउट दिस आई जस्ट सी एंड गेट एक्साइटेड अबाउट थिंग्स सो योर पर्सपेक्टिव एड्स अ लॉट टू टू यू नो ऑल द डिस्कशन दैट वी हैव बीन हैविंग एंड वुड हेल्प अस मी मूव टुवर्ड्स द इकोनॉमिक्स रिलेटेड डिस्कशन दैट वुड हैव विद डॉक्टर महमूद इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग इन एंड आई होप इट वाज हेल्पफुल फॉर द स्टूडेंट्स टू to you know make better decisions and and use this in in their otherwise day to day life and field and, and you know understand the farm as well as the future of farms so thank you so much and and i think the class times up so i'll just let everyone go now thank you vodya thank you bahut bahut shukriya aapka main bas aakhri ek comment sirf yahi kahunga ki jaise maine pehle bhi kaha tha ki i think this is this is a sector that you should all look into agriculture is the future whether you are a business student or a computer science student or a chemistry major मेरे ख्याल में इसमें बहुत ज्यादा पोटेंशियल है दूसरा आज हमने जो ज्यादातर बातें की हैं वो सिर्फ ऑन फार्म की बात की है हमने बाकी के वैल्यू चेन की तो बात ही नहीं की लॉजिस्टिक्स की स्टोरेज की बाकी चीजों की वो देर आर मैसिव अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन दो सेक्टर्स एज वेल मार्केट्स में वगैरह वगैरह उसको भी आप जो है वो देख सकते हैं और आखिरी बस यही कि जो मैंने आपसे एक वो जो एथिकल चॉइस की बात की थी आई थिंक दैट इज समथिंग दैट वी शुड डेफिनेटली थिंक अबाउट एंड और फौजिया का मैं देख रहा था कि जो सारा कोर्स है वो है भी उसके अंदर अब ये बार बार बात आती है even if you are 
uh, even if you have the power to do something, you should be very careful about what you are, what you decide to do. Or um, on that note, uh, best of luck with the rest of the course. Uh, okay, Fazia. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Allah Fiz. Allah Fiz, everyone. Allah Fiz, ma'am. Allah Fiz, ma'am.